Sunrise, the start of every new day, and the name of our leopard catamaran. Come and join Russ and Margie as they jump in to their adventure, sailing the world. This morning, Margie's getting a haircut by Russ. His first attempt ever. You can see how ragged it is now. That's not that bad. <laughs> so, we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so here we go. This much, Margie? Just half an inch, I said. Just half an inch. Let's start down the bottom here. I'm not quite sure where to start. How about you start at the bottom and use the pegs to eclipse? <laughs> Rough the hairdressers. How to go up, Margie? And she's pretty happy with the first day. I'm quite surprised. That's <laughs> that. Thumbs up. One thing I like to do on the boat is keep checking where the winches for the lifting platform are. Just check, you know, everything's okay and there's no corrosion. As you all probably know, we had lots of trouble with it to start with, but I seem to have it worked out now. So this morning, it's just a matter of getting the Allen key and undoing these four bolts. Yeah, unwind these bolts. Be careful you don't drop them overboard, of course. One of the things that happens here is the little gap that's full of, you know, sand and air and fluff and stuff. So, there it is. You can see it's a gunk and around where that is. At the, now the new dynamica that I put on, instead of the strap, the water coming up through that hole and all the water dripping out of the strap down on those couple of sensors down there. Now you can see there, no corrosion at all, no corrosion on the drum and no corrosion on the little counter. There's a little Laser light goes through there, counts those cogs so that it knows where it is at any one time. So, quite happy with that. I'll just clean up, clean up around the thing, put it back on again. It's all good. The wall is working well. This is a very simple setup. You can see there that little counter and the cogs. There's a little light every time a cog goes around, it counts it. That preset and there's a plunger down there with a sensor on either side so the bolt as the arm comes up the bolt's got a narrow part in it the bolt lifts up and um, the light makes contact with the bolt and it tells that it's in the correct position so it stops so when all's going well it's very simple and awesome. We love it. So uh, I'm making a seafood risotto tonight with the snapper we caught out at Great Barrier and the scallops that we caught in January up at uh, Fungaray and the lobster stock that I made out at Great Barrier. Nice. I'm going to keep this lobster stock in the freezer for more than a week. No. I don't know why. And uh, so we've chopped up onion. Yes, yeah, so I've got some onion in there with some butter and some beautiful New Zealand avocado oil. Right. And I'm going to put some garlic and some fennel seeds in. And what's it going to be? Seafood risotto. 
these are my broccoli sprouts, which are ready to eat. I started them about uh, four days ago, and this is the packet they came out of. So I soaked them overnight, and then I divided them equally between the three little trays, and I just rinsed them in tap water about three times a day. And I've already got my next lot being prepared. These are mung beans. These have been soaking overnight in water to loosen the casing and that always makes them sprout a whole lot faster. So as soon as I've taken these sprouts out, I'll give all the trays a really good wash with detergent and then I'll put the mung beans in here and start sprouting them. I've had the handmade lobster stock boiling on the side here and gradually added that to the risotto, stirring all the time and I've just added the um, snapper fillets and the scallops into the risotto so I'm just uh, letting them cook there and then I'll add the rest of this packet of spinach in. In the past I have put in wine um, and added that to the rice as it was just sort of getting fried a bit, but every time I do that it sets the smoke alarm off and I have the to... Gas the gas detector. The gas detector. And I have to stop cooking and wait till it all calms down. That takes me about 10 to 20 minutes. So I've decided not to do that again. So now instead of one wine for the dish, yeah, it's, it's all one, the wine for me. It's all the wine for the cook instead of one for the cook, one for the dish. Now it's all for the cook. I get it. Ready now? Just serve it out. Bit of pumps and on top. Oh, we're going like there. Oh, hold. Oh. And of course, this is one more wine for the cook. We all know Maggie doesn't drink much. But, let's have one glass there. Sometimes when you've been sitting still in an anchorage for a number of weeks, like in lockdown, you have to clean your speed transducer because it sits out there in the water and little critters grow on it and then that affects your true wind and apparent wind readout but we're going to do that today and the leopard 50 the speed transducer or speed wheel is down under this floor hatch get in I have a little screwdriver, scrub and brush, a towel and a little bucket that I can um, wash the transducer with. Uh, there's a plug here, plug right on the other one so you got to be a bit quick with this. Hopefully I don't splash any of this on the camera. You can see the water comes out there. Quick as that. Tighten that down to stop the water coming in. And you can see the growth on that. That's from four weeks not moving in this anchorage at Great Barrier. And now you can see that there that there's all little critters crawling, swimming, all sorts of sludge and stuff, so I'll just clean that off now. I normally just get a screwdriver or something there and just clean this off. You see there now after 
a bit of scrubbing with the little brush and picking around the screwdriver. It's nice and clear. So we'll be able to fit it back in now and get true reading. So a simple little job. Good one to get out of the road. So we'll unscrew this fitting again. The water doesn't squirt up on me again. The arrow on this. Make sure you get it in the right way. See the arrow on the top there. Make sure you get that facing front. These through hole fittings also have a little plug comes with them. So uh, if you need to take the top off any of these through holes to do some work on them or check them for a blockage or something, you can dive under the boat, tie a bit of string through that hole, put the bung up into the through hole fitting that will seal it and then you can come back up here and pull the top off these through hole fittings, check the valve and um, make sure everything's okay, which we've had to do once. So, um, and then you can just go out and the piece of string you've got tied on the little fitting, you can give it a yank and um, we'll pull the bung out or just dive back under and get it out, whichever way. It's very handy. The other thing we do is turn the handles um, every now and then to make sure the valves are still working and not sealed, not blocked with growth or anything. And you'll notice those little plugs are in the handle of all the through hole fittings. This morning we're going to try and install our new bluefin underwater lights these are the alloy ones because the bottom of the dinghy is alloy so you don't want any corrosion things that looks pretty simple drill wire screwdriver plugs a bit of patience let's see how we go we've got it on the lifting platform here so I should be able to walk, work on it pretty easily. Alright, well, first thing we've got to do is drill a couple of holes. Whenever there are jobs to do on the boat that Russ and I think we can manage on our own, we um, have a good go at it. And so today, uh, Russ is going to feed the wire up for the underwater lights. And I've got to put my hand down through a hole in the bottom of the dinghy, well, the floor of the dinghy, and try and get that uh, stiff wire that Russ is pushing along. Okay, I'll thread this. Thread this wire through, are you ready? Yeah. So I'll wiggle the wire around and... Okay. 
Can you feel it? Yep, yep, I can Yep, yep, I can feel it. Are you got it? Yep, okay, I'll pull it up, will I? Already. Yep. Yeah, pull it up. Okay. Got it? Yep, grey one. Yep. Yep, okay. Come on, blow. Yep, I've got it. Okay. Alright, just balance up there somewhere. So my part of the job is done now. I've pulled that wire through. Russ is now going to put some sticker flex around the outside of the light that he's fitted onto the bottom of the dinghy to keep it nice and watertight. Then he'll tighten up the screws and he'll then do all the electrical connections and fit the switch. Beautiful. So with all the outside connections done, I just crawl into the boat now with my drill. Um, need to drill a 12 mil hole through the console to um, fit the switch. Um, do a couple of wiring connections with some um, heat shrink uh, covers over the top and hit the switch. Hopefully it all goes. I'll tell you what, wiring anything is certainly something that I'm not good at. For some reason, every time I do it, it never turns out like it's supposed to, like it reads. reads. So I always got my fingers crossed and double checking and checking all the time. Let's hope. Switch and I've got that wire wired through to the isolation switch too. So, so now it's time to try. Isolation switch on, switch to the light on. Yes! Off. Oh, perfect. I know what you're all thinking, that's pretty bloody easy, but for me, that's a major victory. I fitted these blue lights so we can move around the coral lagoons of the night. After spending the remaining two weeks or so in the marina lockdown, we got a few jobs finished up that we wanted to get done, and then we made our way around to Vivian Bay on Kawa Island, which was about three to four hours sail. Um, it was quite breezy and we had the wind right behind us, so we had the Code D screech up sail up. We spent the night there before getting up uh, early the next morning and made our way up to Fongaray. Very cosy, snug downwind sail today. Leaving Kalwa Island and on our way to Fongaray. Probably stay the night there at Urquhart's Bay. How are we going, Margie? Well, we're having a lovely sail. We've got 10 knots on our port side on the aft beam, and we've got about one to two metres of swell on our starboard aft beam, and it's very calm and very beautiful. And doing seven and a half knots, not bad. Off eight, nine. Apparent. Oh, we really do love this sail. Uh, just magnificent. Huge. This really is a spectacular coastline the whole way along the North Island that we've um, been cruising on. 
This sale specified in our leopard owner's manual as a code D um, downwind asymmetric sale. It's on a Profurl endless line furler, um, which we had a little bit of trouble getting sorted with to start with, but we've extended our line back to electric winch to make it easier for one person to pull it in or let it out. Uh, it really does get the boat hooting along, that's for sure. The other afternoon, um, the sheet line dangled down there and grabbed the seat on the kayak and um, just about flicked it overboard. Lucky we had a line tying it on, that's for sure. Anyway, I think it's about time for a coffee. Pretty cruisy out here. Sure is a tough life on sunrise.